Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. This is your last review for the week. Tomorrow we're doing a top five, it's indie week, so tomorrow we're doing a top uh, five uh, indie slash small press book, horror, horror books. It's, that's important because it's Halloween. Um, and the uh, I, I had a lot of fun with tomorrow's video, um, and I really suggest you check it out. I was able to talk about several books that I've talked about before, and I always like talking, uh, like adding to my thoughts on a book, and that's what I'll be doing in tomorrow's video. But today, uh, this uh, this channel, I said last Halloween for uh, 31 Days of Halloween, that this channel has become a bit of a Haley Piper fanboy account. And we're back on that bullshit today with The Possession of Natalie Glasgow. Let me get my fingers out of the way. By Haley Piper. Haley Piper is easily my new favorite author. Uh, the Queen of Teeth. Um, uh, the Worm and His Kings. Uh, so on. It's, There's just so much good stuff out there. And this one is absolutely no different. I have no criticisms whatsoever for this book. This is the first. I'm not, I will say this up front. I'm not a huge fan of possession books. Uh, the reason why I'm not a huge fan of possession books is because it can all be solved with, you know, Western Christianity. That's, uh, it's, it's always the same thing over and over again. You know, fight the devil with God and so on and so forth. This one is not like that. Even though there are some some aspects to it, I found that what uh, the possession here was the most unique possession story I have ever read, and I've read quite a few of them. Um, this is one of those uh, books that's special. It's very special um, in the uh, pantheon of uh, of books, and not just in the small press. This is one of those books you're not going to find anything else like it, even though the possession trope is so overused, especially in modern literature. Um, I, I love Natalie as a, as a character, although we get very little about Natalie herself. We mostly get uh, the mother, Heather, if I get any of these names wrong, I apologize, um, and then the woman trying to help Natalie, uh, I believe her name is Margaret. Uh, Here's something that I want to say that I really want to harp on. Haley Piper absolutely nails endings. Every single one of her endings is is amazing. It's epic. Uh, the, there there's never a there's never too many lulls. There's there's never lulls in any of Piper's stuff. Um, but in this one especially, when it is. It, when, it, when it does slow down, it's tense even when it slows down. There's not a moment to really breathe and collect yourself in this book. And yes, it's a novella. I think it's. I think. I think it might even be a novelette. I could be wrong. It's a hundred pages. It's a novella. Um, but I also want to harp on the fact that Gemma Amore, who's a fantastic author um, in her own right, she wrote uh, "Dear Laura." She does the audiobook for this one. And while it was a little weird to hear a Brit narrate. Uh, a book that's happening in Connecticut I is a little weird but it didn't bother me nearly as much as the uh, as like something like Adam Neville's the the reddening which uh, changed back and forth between American and British uh, and it was the same narrator is very weird but Gemma does a fantastic amazing job especially during the creepy parts that you have everything in here you have uh, blood and guts you have uh, uh, it's very quiet, subtle horror. Um, but the top three things in this book are the things I look for in every single book, and that's uh, character pacing and dread. Um, the characters are fantastic, especially Margaret. Loved Margaret to death. I loved Heather. Natalie, very, you, like I said, we get very little, but just enough that you care about what's happening to this child. Um, I loved all, all the characters. The pacing is absolutely insane. It's, it's, it's crazy. I am in awe how, how well Haley does her, her, her pacing. There's always something happening. Even when people are just talking, you are getting needful, need the information that you need. Um, and yes, I'm excited and I'm all handsy and whatnot, but it, I, I can't express this enough how amazing this author is and it's not that she's a hidden gem but I feel like I've, I've come across treasure every time that I read something by her and I am so thrilled to see that her career is taking off and that she's getting you know all these contracts I absolutely love it and I'm so so happy for her um, and the last one is dread throughout the whole thing no one's no one's safe in a Haley Piper story 
and I think that's important for the dread. I never know who's going to survive, who's going to make it, what's going to happen. You, you don't know. So going into this one, I fully expected the entire cast to die. I won't tell you if that's what happens or not, but I fully expected you know, that no one, I, no one is safe. And that's what I like to feel when I go into a book is that no one is safe. If they make it out, fine. If they don't, fine. But I want to feel like there is something on the line here. And the way Piper writes always makes me feel like everything is on the line. And I absolutely love that. So yeah, character, pacing, dread. I have no criticism whatsoever. I haven't had a single criticism about any of the in any of the Haley Piper books. And it just keeps continuing, continuing. Just if you have not read Haley, Haley Piper, please go out and do so. It's an absolutely fantastic book. You can start here. You can start with uh, Benny Rose, The Cannibal King, which uh, hap occurs on Halloween. So if you're looking for a Halloween read, definitely check that one out. We got Queen of Teeth is an exceptional monster story. Amazing about vagina dentata and well beyond that. Um, and then you have uh, The Worm and His Kings, which is very dark, brooding, like Clive Barker cosmic horror. Um, and yeah, so... If you're a horror fan whatsoever, Haley Piper has something for you. Um, and I love that she's so prolific. That means I never have to wait too too long for a new Haley Piper book. I still have No Gods for Drowning. The Mind is a Horrible Thing, I think it's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think that's what it's called. Or The Mind is a Terrible Thing, so on and so forth. I still need to read those two. And there's more stuff coming. I am so excited. But have you read The Possession of Natalie Glasgow? If you have, let me know what you thought about it down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. You know, last year I stumbled all over the name of the series, and this year I seem to be getting it right the majority of the time, but now I'm mad because I, I almost screwed it up again. Anyways, bye.